When you think of amazing build quality and robust hardware compatibility, it's hard not to associate that with Encase. The M3 is no exception. I really wanted to deem this case as unnecessary compared to the M2, and boy was I wrong. Although the M3 is larger, particularly in the height and width, it doesn't take up much more space on your desk. While adding official support for larger coolers like the Nitua D15 G2, and extra headroom for some giant graphics cards. You can choose a reference like setup with the GPU at the bottom, vertical GPU option if you purchase the optional vertical GPU kit, which also includes a riser cable. The inverted setup is just that, the reference setup but upside down. Now your GPU is at the top, pushing warm air downward. The smaller your components, the more options you have to play with. The SFX power supply, iTex motherboard, and a two-slot graphics card will net you the most freedom when shopping for parts. The NK Sim 3 on paper is 19 liters, 270 millimeters tall, 192 millimeters wide, and like the M3, 366 millimeters long, with a volume increase of 4 liters. We get the same quality CNC machined aluminum with a stunning anodized silver finish, currently the only option for the greater M3 model. Now you have more mounting positions for MATX motherboards, making the transition from mid tower to small form factor much easier. Support for SFX, SFXL, and with the additional purchase, ATX power supplies up to 140 millimeters. Up to three 280 millimeter radiators for custom liquid cooling, room for seven case fans and up to six 140 millimeter fans, and one 120 millimeter fan on the rear. 360 millimeters of space for the GPU with a max thickness of four slots, and 168 millimeters of clearance for the CPU cooler. Packaging is something in case does extremely well. Now arriving in a black colored box, we're met with two black anodized side panels. The structural backplate that's tasked with supporting virtually all your components, with multiple levels of adjustability for the motherboard and power supply, along with the ability to be flipped for the inverted setup option. The redesigned top panel with a new locking mechanism when paired with the front panel. A top or side radiator bracket, and unfortunately the kit only comes with one, You'll need to purchase an extra one if you want to mount fans or radiators on the top and side. The bottom panel was spaced for up to two 140mm fans and vertical riser kit. You get a power extension cable. Underneath that, we also get the beautiful graded front panel, which does feel heavier and more premium, featuring extremely precise CNC milk graded holes, giving it that iconic cheese grater look. Please keep in mind the grader model does not have front I.O. So the reserve for the rounded M2 and M3 variant. We get the rear panel, which now includes a space for a 120 millimeter fan, our power button, rear GPU and motherboard access. In a Ziploc bag, we get a set of screws, standoffs, washers, and spare parts. The last thing is the PSU bracket, which can go easily missed if you unbox this too quickly. My goal is to build something stylish and not too complicated, featuring some new components. But we started with a reoccurring component I used in my M2 build, the MSI B850i Edge TI motherboard. This board is stunning with a nice mix of silver and black accents, featuring the AM5 1718 socket, PCIe 5.0 for the Byte 16, and the M.2 slot with active cooling. Dual DDR5 slots rated at 8,200 mega transfers up to 120 gigabytes of capacity. The rear connectivity is simple, but features a five gigabit LAN and a 20 gigabit USB type C port, and quick disconnect antennas for Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. I wanted to use the upcoming MSI X870i motherboard, but it hasn't released. MSI, if you're listening, I'm interested. Because we can, I've thrown the Ryzen 9950X3D, a 16-core part with 32 threads and a dedicated 3D VCAST CCD, making this the optimal productivity and gaming chip. If you're super rich or have won the lottery, you too can pick up this 32 gigabyte DDR5 memory from Team Group, the T-Crate Expert Kit in black. With memory prices steadily going up and up and up, 32 gigabytes is the max most people are willing to go for. For the storage, the next AI frontier, I have a one terabyte Samsung 9100 Gen 5 SSD. Super fast storage capable of sequential read and write speeds of about 14,000 megabytes per second in favorable scenarios. Now for the cooler, and I got something very exciting. The brand new Noctua NHD15 G2 Chromax. And at 168 millimeters, it's perfect for the NK Sim 3. Equipped with two NH A14 by 25R G2 Chromax black fans, which are SUPP or offset by a 50 RPM, to avoid harmonic resonance when two fans next to each other are running at the same RPM speeds. With my sample, both are calibrated to either 1475 or 1525 RPM. Like the original D15 Chromax, we get 
all black nickel plated aluminum heat fans, but this time a larger nickel plated copper coal plate, along with eight massive nickel plated copper heat pipes. Since we're using the AM5 CPU, we have the offset bracket that repositions the coal plate better optimized for AM5 software CCD placement. Using that tool's NTH2 thermal paste, seat the D15 G2 cooler over the CPU, and with the included Torx 20 driver, in short equal increments, fasten down the two captive screws, locking the cooler into place. The two G2 rounded Chromax fans are installed in the exhaust configuration, exhausting warm air through the back of the cooler. Because the N3 has a dedicated 120mm fan mount on the rear panel, we'll use the Noctua NF812-25 Chromax fan, set to exhaust, to match the D15's exhaust configuration. Since the fourth screw hole is covered by the GPU I.O. bar, we'll use three screws to secure the fan. We are going with a reference layout. I'm going to install the front and rear panel to the back plate first. You'll need six countersunk screws, including five 5mm countersunk screws and one 3mm countersunk screw on the middle screw hole on the front panel. This will give our case its first structure. To see the motherboard, we'll need to install the standoffs next. I'm using the very top position to mount the motherboard to give our GPU a surplus of fresh air. From the back side of the back plate, secure four standoffs using four countersunk screws. Once our motherboard is seated, we can secure it down with four flathead M3 screws. Remember to install the power button and the PSU extension cable. Doing so later could be impossible. To power this system, we have the all new SP1000P from Lee & Lee, a 1000 watt 80 plus platinum SFX power supply. Featuring a dual color 12 volt two x six connector, braided textured cables, and a confident 10 year warranty. They include this external power switch adapter for resetting a unit without removing components. Usually I go with a Corsair SF1000, but healthy competition is welcomed, especially in the smaller SFX form factor category. And at the MSRP of $170, it's an incredible value. Please be aware that these Lean Lee units have a new panout configuration and you'll need new custom cables if you have the older SP850 units. I prefer stiffer, thinner cables to fit in tighter spaces over ultra soft silicon cables. Our APN CPU cable is 400 millimeters long, our 24 pin cable is 300 millimeters long, and the 12 volt 2 by 6 cable is also 300 millimeters long. With the screws that come with your power supply, install the PSU bracket. Because I want to highlight these beautiful premium silver wire cables from my DIY, I'm going to mount the PSU on its side. For our GPU, we have the RTX 5080 Founders Edition card with a flow through design. It's also two slots, giving us more clearance for bottom intake fans. Remove the rear GPU bracket and seat the card directly into the motherboard PCIe slot. Then reinstall the GPU bracket, then the card to the bracket. To feed cool air into the 5080, we have two Noctua NF A14 by 25 G2 Chromax fans. The same A14 G2 fans we know, but in black. I placed the motherboard at the very top position on the motherboard backplate. This is to ensure that the bottom fans don't interrupt the GPU's natural airflow pathway. To maximize airflow further, I have these 3D printed case feet that actually increase the height by 20 millimeters and elevate the look of the case, no pun intended. I use these silver M3 countersunk screws, which fasten the bottom panel to the frame of the case. Using the included side bracket, we'll install another A14 G2 Chromex fan as intake, providing fresh air to mix in with the warm air from the 5080 to not completely heat soak the D15 G2 during gaming. Performance is what you'd expect. The D15 G2 Chromex is extremely quiet at 800 RPM. The bottom fans are barely on at 500 RPM. In Cinebench R24, at 800 RPM, we see the 9950X3D score 53 degrees above ambient or 78 degrees straight, a large 12 degree improvement over the previous generation. After 30 minutes of gameplay at 1440p and 4K in Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing, the 9950X3D and 5080 are sitting at high 70s and low 60s. Those G2 Chromex fans are so quiet, you can go up to 1000 RPM and still have a comfortable playing session. With the 5080's fans locked to 1200 RPM, the noise levels are just breaking 40 decibels. And that's with a noise floor of 34 decibels. The side intake fan brings it up to about 42, 43 decibels. The M3 is great. They took the already good M2 and made it better. Subjectively sturdier build quality, the same amazing finish quality, and added cooling and hardware compatibility. 
Sure, it's on the edge of what's considered small form factor, but I think it's still going to be the best option if you wish to enter the small form factor space, especially if you're bringing mid-tower components, like a MATX motherboard or a ATX power supply. In case has tons of add-ons in the works, as of now, most are still making their way to market. This includes the side I.O. kit, the rear I.O. covers, tempered glass, and greater side panels. I wish they'd include more than one radiator bracket in the box. And in case just announced, they'll be including dust filters in all M3 kits. The greater M3 only comes in silver. And if you want black, you have to get the rounded model. At least with that, you'll get the front I.O. Currently, you can get the greater M3 for $245 about $20 more than a greater M2, and I'm confident in saying that the M3 is a better case than the M2. Links for everything mentioned in this video are down in the description. If you like what you've seen here, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.